Hi guys. You guys there? So this is the members Q&A live stream. This is what I do at 8 p.m. for my members. So if you guys have any questions, um, I've asked you guys before if you would please just watch the live at 7. But if you didn't have time to catch the live at 7, I understand. I'm here for it. I can still go over what happened today. Today was day 8 of the Ghislaine Maxwell trial here in New York City. And I had some issues this morning getting in, which really got me upset and kind of set the tone, unfortunately, for um, what was to come. But I was denied access to the courthouse three times and had to reach out to the department head of security to fix it and she did and i finally got in however i did hey speaking of truth thank you so much yeah i'm, I'm really glad i was able to get into because i was like this cannot be happening especially since the prosecution is going to rest on thursday i was like no today and tomorrow are definitely going to be important days hi wendy hi dave thank you for joining me so right off the bat, I want to tell you guys that something today was, did anybody see the live stream at seven? First of all, let's start there. So I know what, I'm, what we're doing here. Did you guys get to see it or no? Guys. Okay. Well today I'm just gonna, today was Sean. Palante siempre Nadia. Thank you so much. Gonz, I appreciate you. Of course, anytime. Hi, Robert, Alex Douglas. Yes, you watched it. Okay, Dave was busy. Uh, Beacon of Truth couldn't make it. Okay, so I'm just going to recap really quickly. The uh, the witnesses this morning that I missed, but I got all the notes on, were Sean. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Dunamis333, appreciate you. Um, I missed Sean. Sean was the boyfriend of Carolyn, the woman that gave a amazing testimony the other day. She was a minor. If you guys don't know about that, you could rewatch the video uh, from yesterday. And today was her boyfriend at the time. He was an adult already. He was 18. He verified everything. He corroborated everything that she had said, including that he had met Epstein, including that he had taken uh, Carolyn to Epstein's house, along with other minor girls, uh, a girl named Amanda, a girl named, um, excuse me, let me get it for you because I want to get everything straight. Um, okay. So I'm just going to go over really quick. So Sean, he confirmed that he had met Epstein outside once and that they spoke. He uh, confirmed the women who called. He said it was Sarah and two women with accents, one French, one British, um, and that he himself had taken Carolyn to Epstein's house various times when she was 14. He confirmed that he had taken other minors there as well and that he was dating them too, which is gross. This guy is like... A meth head and oh you guys saw it okay good well joy you know what you could always watch it because it's it's up so you can watch it I'm just kind of like really quickly um uh, Melissa a girl named Melissa who was 16 Amanda Laszlo who was either 15 or 16 he had taken them also why because they were all they, the girls would come back with the money and they would buy drugs and everybody would do the drugs together so apparently that was a thing and he corroborated the FedEx package with the lingerie in it that um epstein had sent carolyn um the cross only argued that sean hadn't mentioned any of this when his testimony to the thank you america the free thank you when he um had given testimony to the fbi until much later but that doesn't matter it's neither here nor there and so there was some other talk the thing that that mostly today was the uh, a woman named nicole hesse who was a caretaker of the palm beach home and she kind of just went through like how messages were taken. Um, the cross of uh, the defense tried to say, well, there's no way to really know who's taking the message. And that was absolutely false because Hesse herself could identify when it was her taking the message because of the way that she did it. She was very precise. When it was somebody else, mostly a lessee, it would just be kind of scribbled. And so they shot themselves in the foot there. Um, like, like usual, like usual, because that's just how they, I don't understand. I truly don't understand. The other witness was David Rogers. If you recall, the first witness in this trial was the pilot and his name was uh, Larry Vosofsky. And he said that he had been hired 
at the same time as a man named David Rogers. David Rogers was actually hired first by Epstein and he worked for Epstein for 28 years from 1991 to 2019. He worked as first as the pilot and then as the co-pilot when he and Larry switched sides. And let me see, he went over his responsibilities and all that and then Comey got into it and she got all the flight logs. And then Comey, and this is the point that I wanna to make to you guys, okay? Because when I did research on Epstein and I did like a super deep dive as much as I could, I realized that there was not there was not a consensus as to when Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell met, right? So it was commonly said like, oh, she her father passed away and then she moved to New York and that she met Epstein. That was typically what was said. However, there were other accounts where people said absolutely not. I saw them. I saw Ghislaine Maxwell come to New York with her father for events, for gala events, for charities, for fundraisers, whatever, and they were with Epstein. But since there's like no real way to know, it kind of was thrown up in the air until today. They weren't talking about, the, I don't think the point was to, the point wasn't to make a, a note of when Glenn met Epstein. The point was to say, okay, I'm going to tell you, Comey asked the uh, pilot if she if he knew about Glenn's apartments, the different places that she had lived in New York, and he said yes. And he said exactly where they were. The first one was a huge building on 59th Street. Uh, then she moved to a studio apartment, and then she ended up getting this huge brownstone that was like six six floors and it had a garden outside and the whole bit, right? And so the pros, um, the defense objected to that and Comey said it goes to motivation. And right, because if you're going from an apartment on 59th Street to a studio apartment, like what happened? And then a couple of years later, you move into this like humongous mansion and you own it, right? So. What Comey was trying to do was establish motivation for Glenn Maxwell to get involved with this ring. But what I realized during this conversation, this examination, is that Glenn Maxwell knew Jeffrey Epstein before her father died. And it was, today was confirmed. Um, the question was, what happened in between the time when Ghislaine moved from her large apartment on 59th Street in Columbus Circle to her studio apartment? And the witness, well, right there, there was an objection, right? The defense objected, and Comey says it goes to motive, Your Honor, and they had a sidebar, and then the judge said overruled. So the witness could answer, and um, Mr. Rogers said her father passed away in 1991. Okay, that means that he knew Ghislaine Maxwell. She was already in a relationship with Jeffrey Epstein because he said they had a romantic relationship. The, the pilot knew her already. They already had this relationship when she was living on 59th Street in 1991. And then her father died. And then she moved to the studio apartment. So... I'm sure you guys have read plenty of stuff on the internet stating that in reality, Maxwell's father, Robert Maxwell, was involved in this ring and that he was the one that had brought Epstein into it. It wasn't Epstein that brought Blaine Maxwell into it. It was the other way around. But since there's always been a question as to when they met, that wasn't really possible because how would her father get him involved if they didn't meet until after her father died? But today the pilot confirmed that she was already in that romantic relationship, which goes to prove that obviously she knew him before her father died well enough to have a relationship with him. Welcome Ronan, well enough to have a relationship with him because she was in New York in a romantic relationship with Epstein and then her father died. And then she moved to the studio apartment. So I thought, I mean, that wasn't the point of the, of the 
you know, the, the direct, but that was incredible to me because this absolutely now it's like, well, that now that's a possibility. Think about it. Why? like in what world right like we talked about before every all of this was completely normal to her already this was normalized she was already familiar with this type of thing going on the question being like who brought who into what but clearly she brought him into it in my opinion why because she already knew epstein she was already in a romantic relationship with him her father died she lost all the money. <sighs> Sorry, guys, there's something going on with this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry that it's buffering. I know that it is. I'm really sorry. This will not be like this next week. Okay. I promise you guys. This will not be like this next week. Just let me change the settings. I brought a cable. I brought all that, but I have to set the computer up in a certain way and I haven't had time. Um. Let's see if that works. I hope that should be good. Hopefully that's good. Um, so yeah, so this, this, now it's a possibility. It's absolutely a possibility that Ghislaine Maxwell, and like this was already a thing and she must have told, the way it looks like to me is like she told Epstein, okay, well, I'm broke and you know all these people and we can do what needs to be done that we already know how it's done and this is how we're going to do it because she knew epstein already so i want to hear your guys thoughts please let me know i'm not getting any chats from you guys you're, you're breaking my heart let me know what you guys think about that let me know i mean i mean what do you guys think thank you mark demoline um, do you guys agree? Do you guys, have you read anything online that says that Maxwell's father was actually involved in this ring way before Epstein? Um, you also need to remember that AWS has been having problems this week. What is that? What's AWS? Sorry, Ronan, but I'm a little slow when it comes to acronyms. This is just water. Somebody asked me if it was beer. It is not beer. Mm -hmm. What's AWS? Oh goodness, all right. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to tell you guys? Amazon Web Service. I think we need to start looking into this other island owner. Yeah, well, right. So, okay, Amazon Web Service. I don't, what does that have to do with what I'm saying? Is it, is, do they own YouTube? I don't know about that. Um, thank you, Claudette. I don't have really any. I know there's nothing on MSN, and there's there won't be. I know a lot of people because I know there were there are two women that came from um, the UK to watch the trial, and they're just like, <laughs> oh, go have a beer. No, I, I don't drink like that. I just, I, I'm not against drinking. I will drink sometimes, but I just I don't like it. Um, there are two women that are in the room usually when uh, the room that I'm in. And they're just like, oh, you know, why aren't they mentioning anybody's name? Why aren't they dropping any names? Why aren't they doing this? It's very important to get Glenn Maxwell convicted because if she goes down and she's going to talk, she's relatively young. She's not going to want to spend the rest of her life behind bars. She's going to talk. And that's all it takes. The most important thing right now is to focus on her. Yes, very, very complicated, super complicated. Um, just focus on her and um, get her convicted because if she goes down, all she has to do is name one person, one powerful person that was involved to save her own hide, and that person will give more names, and then they will all go down like dominoes. So we really have to hand it to the prosecution. They have stayed laser-focused. I've said this before. Laser focus on the task at hand, which is to get Glenn Maxwell behind bars, and that's it. They are not trying to drop names. They're not trying to muddy the waters. They're not trying to give the defense any ammunition to, for example, um, impeach the testimony of any witness. So they're keeping it clean, and I think that's really smart. Jesse Waters talking about the trial on his show today. 
Really? Okay, good. I mean, did he say, Wendy, did he say anything like, um, I don't know, substantial? Like, did he say like what he thought? Did he say anything about what's going on? I, I haven't met anybody who's, um, who's doing anything for Fox since I've been there. Uh, I've met Vanity Fair. I've met Slate. Um, I met another man today who has a podcast, which I forgot the name of it right now. And he's also on YouTube. And he told me that somebody on YouTube got their uh, account closed for reporting on the trial and also their Twitter account. And I forgot, um, I want to say, oh, I forgot the guy's name. But anyhow, the guy was, I don't know that he was in the court courtroom, but uh, hey Nadia, thanks for everything you're doing. I got a question for you. If the prosecution makes his closing arguments tomorrow, then aside jury deliberation, what will the remaining four weeks be used? Okay. So the prosecution, the lead prosecutor is Comey, uh, Maureen Comey. There are, it's Maureen Comey, it's Laura Pomerantz, it's Mo, another woman, and we're back, a male, and the four, the second guy, I forgot his last name, I'm sorry, I have not seen him once, so he didn't stick to my head. Um, so the prosecution will rest tomorrow, and then Friday, the defense will begin bringing in their witnesses, right? And then the remaining time will be the defense witnesses and the cross-examination of those witnesses by the prosecu prosecutorial team, which I cannot wait. I cannot wait to watch their witnesses get torn to pieces because Comey, I'm, I'm telling you, you do not want Comey after you. She will tear you down. She, she, has, she does not care. She's there to win. Her team is there to win. And they get straight to the point. Their style of doing, like, even their direct is very direct. It's very, like, and what is that? And could you explain this? And, you know, just very to the point. It's Everything's crystal clear. There's no question left in the jury's mind as to why the information that's being presented matters, what, how it correlates to everything else. Everything is crystal clear. And they don't waste time. Even when she redirects, um, you know, after the defense does their cross-examination and, and sometimes Comey will redirect, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. She shows in one or two questions exactly why the defense was wrong, the defense misled you, and that's it. With Respectfully to the witness, also to the jury and to everybody else there, just get to the point. She's excellent at that. So I, I can't imagine, like, next week's going to be any different. The cross-exams are going to be on fire. Um, thank you, Cecily. Thank you so much. Okay, what was the reason you were not allowed in earlier this morning? I don't know, Max. I do not know. I know that the first time that it happened, that it, it said access denied, I was like, all right, it's my phone. And then it happened twice. And that's when I started getting like, okay, wait, what? And then a number popped up. So I called the number. The clerk said, I see you here. I gave her my name and my telephone number. She's like, yeah, I see you here. That's so weird. She's like, well, I'm going to send you a link directly now to your phone. Open it while I'm on the phone and tell me what happened. So I did it. I did the whole questionnaire. I did the whole thing with her on the phone. And thank goodness I didn't hang up on her because, again, it was denied. And she was like, okay, I don't understand. She's like, I'm going to give you the email to the head of the Department for Security. And she, she'll be able to help you or answer any questions because I don't understand and I did that and I emailed the lady and then I was waiting outside, freezing, waiting for her to call me because that's what the clerk said. She'll call you, make sure you leave your, your telephone number, which I did. And I'm like, when is this woman going to call me? Whatever. And finally she emails me and she's like, try it again. And so I was like, all right. So I went back upstairs, up the, um, the court stairs and tried it again and it worked. And I just left it at that because you know what? I got inside and that's the main thing that I was worried about, not being able to tell you guys what was going on, especially because the prosecution is about to rest tomorrow. And I figured that today and tomorrow were going to be huge days for this trial. And seeing as today there weren't any witnesses that were accusers, I'm imagining tomorrow will be the day that the fourth accuser comes out and I'm assuming that the prosecution saved the best for last. Thank you, Gemstone. Thank you so much. Hit, yes, please hit the like button, you guys. Please hit the like button. Um, I wonder if this could last for years, like residual energy. If it's up to the defense, it would last for years. Literally how they are cross-examined. Uh, their cross-examinations are all like, 
meaningless fluff. You guys should watch the live stream that I did at 7 to really get into it. I don't want to reiterate here because some of you have already seen it. Um, and it's just like so disrespectful. It's it's so much. It's like torture. I'm not kidding you. We were in that room just like, oh my God, what? why isn't anybody stopping him? Why isn't the judge stopping him? Why isn't it like, okay, for you that didn't see that, right? Um, that didn't see the other um, live. So the prosecutor, I'm sorry, the defense today was a, a guy named Everlane, Everdale, sorry, Everdale. And he was asking so many random, irrelevant questions. And then there was like a pause, like a weird pause. And then he addressed the judge. He said, should I continue, Your Honor? And the judge is like, as opposed to what? Like she was fed up. And we all were. And everybody started laughing when she said that. And he was like, oh, sorry. I thought it was later than what it was. And we were like, oh, my God. So there's more. So obviously, and oh, and then the judge said, no, it just feels that way. Obviously, he was just stalling to run out the time. And I left at 445 because I could not take it anymore. I, I like my my mind was melting I couldn't take it anymore and he wasn't gonna say anything or do anything that was gonna change anything so I was like you know I'm gonna cut my loss I'm gonna leave now sorry and um and I'm glad I did because my friends said that nothing happened afterwards so um ah uh, thanks Lauren they're up on your great honest reporting I well you know what yeah, it was lucky, Max. It was lucky. So I, well, it was a blessing because I was like, you guys, please pray for me. I went on Instagram. I was like, please pray for me. Like, I, I really need to get in there. Gotta run, Nadia. You're awesome. Thanks so much for what you're doing. Thanks, Jay, for tuning in. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, you guys, if you have any questions, this is the time because if not, then we're just going to cut it short. Um, let me know. And, of course, this is going to be on replay. So members only, of course, and you guys can watch it whenever you want. It's my pleasure, Max. Truly, it is my pleasure. I think it's going to be great. It's been great so far. Um, and tomorrow's going to be a big day, a really big day. So I will see you guys at 7 p.m. is my live stream for the general public. If you guys have time to watch it, that would be great. If you don't, I completely understand. But regardless, I will do the 8 p.m. here for us for um, Q&A. If you guys have any questions, um, you know, just keep them in mind. And then I'll be happy to answer them. Of course... Joe 3B1 Shinobi. I think I'm saying that completely wrong. Are you going in the morning to sit in the room? Uh, yeah. So I have to physically and mentally prepare for that because it would mean I have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to be at the courthouse by 5.30 in the morning to stand in line. So the way it is right now, like it's probably going to be next week because next week there's a totally different schedule because of the holidays. So once I know that I can come home and do a live and go straight to bed and sleep the whole next day, I will definitely do that. So I think next week we're on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday only. So most likely I'll do that on Wednesday because on Thursday I can just sleep all day and catch up on some rest. Thanks, Ronan. Oh, Max, you're so sweet. Thank you guys so much. I love you to death. Please, um, you know, just stay the course and stay positive and stay in your spirit. Okay, remember, stay happy. Good night, guys. I love you. Thank you for everything. I'll see you guys tomorrow.